Welcome to the English with Kirsty podcast from www.englishwithkirsty.com. Here I'll be sharing with you tips, information and other learning resources so that you can improve your business English. Welcome to episode 122 of the English with Kirsty podcast. And just before we start, a quick announcement, um, just to let people know that I was interviewed for another podcast, and that came out this week, and that is the um, Paw Print podcast. So it's about um, animal rescue stories, and um, so it's nothing to do with my job, but I was interviewed on there um, to talk about um, the dog that I used to have, and the time that we went to visit some captive wolves, and... Um, a dog that I know that um, belongs to a member of our family that was rescued from um, a really difficult life where she was having litter after litter of puppies and, and how she has a good life now but um, how that's something that needs not to happen. Um, so if you're interested in animals then I will also link the paw print podcast on today's show notes page and that will be englishwithkirstycom slash podcast slash episode 122. So today we're carrying on with our Better English in 2018 series and we're talking about reading. And for anyone who's been following this podcast for a while, I did do something about reading last spring. Um, but this is different. So this has got some of that information in it, but it's um, there are more tips. So even if you did listen to that episode, there is more in this episode for you if you want to listen to this one as well. It's not just a copy of the other one. Um, so I'm talking about reading because I think a lot of people say they want to read more, they want to understand more, um, they want to improve their English by reading, and that's a really good way to improve your English, especially in terms of your vocabulary, um, understanding how words fit together in sentences. If you can see uh, native speakers doing it or um, advanced learners, then you really get a feel for the language, the different styles of writing. Um, and it's something you can do without having to construct your own sentences. So it's a way to really grow your vocabulary and deepen your knowledge. And even for um, people reading in their native languages is a great way to do that as well. You know, you never stop learning um, and learning new words or seeing people expressing themselves in different ways. It's, it's really good for you when you want to improve your own native language skills too. But I'm speaking here specifically about people who want to learn English. I think the problem is when people think about reading, they think about a long novel or a book that they read at school or something that is um, a fiction book, a story, and some people just don't like that. I mean, I have students who love reading and they read book after book and we discuss them in their lessons sometimes and it's a really good way for them to develop their, their um, English, but some people just don't enjoy reading books. And if you really don't enjoy reading books, you're probably not going to love reading English books if, if you don't enjoy it in your own language. I mean, you might have to do it if you're at school. Um, but in terms of reading for pleasure, think about what you would enjoy reading. Because when I think back to my childhood, I did like books. I was interested in books and stories and I did a lot of reading on my own. But I went through a phase when I just all I wanted to do was talk about horses. And a lot of the books that I read were about horses too, because it, it was what I wanted to know about at that time. And so for you as well, if you want to improve your English, what do you want to know about at the moment? Is it something to do with your job? Is it something to do with your hobbies? Because reading articles about your favourite football team is still reading. It doesn't have to be a book. So the challenge today is think about what you want to read if you, you know, set yourself some goals around reading. What is it? Is it a book? Is it some articles? Is it a magazine? Is it um, something fictional? Because books don't just have to be stories. It could be um, how to do something or, you know, ideas about something. It doesn't have to be a story. So um, think about what you'd like to read and how you want to read it, because it doesn't have to be a printed book. It could be an audio book. It could be um, a book to read on your tablet. It can be all kinds of things. So um, try to widen the definition of what a book is as well. I read today somebody said, oh, it doesn't count as reading if it's an audio book. And I was thinking, well, no, it doesn't count as physically reading with your eyes, but it's still reading a book. So um, 
you know, let the definition be a bit wider in terms of reading and also the definition of, of what you want to read and what is a book. So I've got some do's and don'ts here, things that you should do and things that it's better not to do. So things that you should do. Find something that's interesting. You know, if you hate a certain genre of books, I don't enjoy um, crime detective thrillers or horror books generally. And so if I don't enjoy them in English, I'm probably not going to enjoy them in another language either. So think about what you would enjoy before you even start. Number two is something I touched on, thinking about how you want to read, whether it is an ebook or a, an audio book or uh, a, a printed copy. Number three, take the book with you. So don't just leave it somewhere and think, oh yeah, I've got some time, I could do some reading, and, and then you haven't got your book with you. Um, think about having the book around so when you have some spare time, you can read it. Number four, it's good to have it with you for the, the odd time that you end up waiting for someone or your bus is late or something like that. But um, if you can, think about some time when it would be good to read. Like if you have some time at lunchtime or if you want to read before you go to sleep or in the morning, it's, it's different for different people. Um, but try and think about some times when you could fit more reading into your day if reading is something you want to work on. So number five, if you're the kind of person that gets the energy from being with other people, sharing ideas, that kind of thing, then find a reading group, find a book club, um, find some friends who are reading the same kind of things and talk to them. It could be complete strangers and the only thing you've got in common is the books that you're reading or it could be your friends. But, you know, try to find someone to talk to because it keeps you accountable for reading and it also gives you ideas. Um, makes you really think about what you're reading rather than just reading through it. So if, if, if that's something that you would enjoy, then see what you can find either locally on a site like Meetup or um, look online and see if you can find an online book club. Number six, um, if, if you haven't really done much reading, then don't start with a thousand page novel, you know, start small and build up. Like you can read articles, you can read short stories, you can read lots of different things but it doesn't have to be a, like a mammoth project if, if you haven't done a lot of reading or you don't have a lot of time at the moment. Number seven, um, sometimes it helps if you know the story already so um, you know you know the characters, you know what's going to happen and you may not know the words in English but you don't have to think about understanding who the characters are and what they're doing. Number eight, um, Think about the kind of book that you normally enjoy. So it may be that your standard of English isn't quite up to what you would normally enjoy in your own language and that's often um, people want to read exactly the same things and, and sometimes you have to start a bit more simply but think about the kind of things that you enjoy, um, the kind of characters, the kind of stories and try to find something like that in English rather than trying something completely different and then finding it's boring. Number nine, um, ask for recommendations. So sometimes I run out of ideas about what to read and then I look online. You can go to somewhere like Goodreads where you can see what people have written about books. Um, some apps, uh, we have an app called Waterstones in the UK um, and they have popular books and the top however many books and you can sort it by genre and you can find new books that way. Or if you follow the tip further up and you belong to a book group, then you can ask, ah, you know, what are other people reading? Or maybe post it on somewhere like Facebook and ask your friends, what have you read recently? Can you recommend any good books? Or if you're learning a language specifically and you're in language groups, then ask in there, you know, what are people reading in English at the moment? And number 10, be realistic. It's not about numbers. For example, in January, I read six books, but one of them was really long. So don't say something like, oh, I'm going to read two books every month if you're setting yourself up to fail because one of the books you choose is really long. So I don't know how many books I read in February. It might be six, might be more, might be less. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. But, you know, it's good to set yourself some goals like, oh, I want to read this, um, I don't know, within a month or I want to do half an hour of reading every day or something. You know, it's good to be clear about your goals, but also don't just be driven by the numbers like I can't go to sleep until I've read this or you know I, it, it shouldn't be about the numbers it should be about finding something you enjoy and, and trying to enjoy that as well. 
So now some things that you shouldn't do. Um, don't choose a book that's too hard for you. Even if you really like the author or you really like the characters or you've seen the film and you think it would be great, if, if the way that that book is written is too difficult for you at the moment, you're not going to enjoy it because you're going to be looking at words all the time and thinking, oh, I only stood, understood half of this, it's annoying. So, you know, be reasonable. Also, don't choose something that's too easy because then it's not really a challenge, is it? Number two, um, some people read really, really old books, and I know that some school children have to um, have to read books from Shakespeare or around that time. You know, that English is very, very different. Um, if you're interested in that period, then fine. But if you want to have vocabulary that you can use nowadays, then reading something from several hundred years ago is not going to equip you to do that. So, you know, don't think, oh, everybody says they read this book. I have to read this. Find a modern translation if, if the idea is that you just want to know the story, but you want to use vocabulary that you will use all the time. You don't feel that just because something is a classic that you have to read it in English. Number three, um, be mindful about the words that you don't know. So it, it is good to learn some new words and to write some useful words or expressions down because you can pick up a lot of good colloquial English in certain types of books. But if you write everything down, particularly things that you'll never use again, then it's just going to become a chore and you won't enjoy the book. You'll just be seeing it as a, a language learning exercise. Number four. Um, it's kind of what I said earlier, but don't don't start too big or don't start um, with something that you've read before. and You think, oh, it's good. I know the characters, but it's, you know, like a massive big book. You know, start with something that you think you'll enjoy. And number five, if you're not enjoying it, don't plow through it. If you have to do it for school or something, then you're going to have to read it to the end because that's what your exam's about. But, you know, I give books a couple of chapters. If I'm not enjoying them, then I move on. They they didn't impress me, so, you know, they lost their chance. And maybe I'm going to miss some really good books that way. But I think there are so many books out there that I'd like to read and so many interesting stories and good authors that if somebody hasn't got my attention by the first couple of chapters, then well, I'm going to find someone who can. So if you're not enjoying a book, I would advise you not to feel pressured to finish it just because you started it. You know, move on and find something that you will enjoy. Number six, it's okay if you don't understand everything. Like, certainly sometimes I don't understand every single word in books that I read. If it's critical for the story, it's, it's you know, like a something you need to understand, then fine go and look it up but um, it's normal not to understand every single word I think some the problem that some English learners have is they think that they've failed somehow if they don't understand every word in a text and yeah it's just sometimes you, you don't understand every word and that's okay <coughs> uh, number seven um, I read a lot of blogs as well and it's I I find it interesting. I have two blogs and I like to communicate with other bloggers. And reading blogs is also a good way to read, especially if you want some bite sized articles to read. But just because somebody's writing in their native language, it doesn't mean they're writing well. So don't assume that everything everybody writes is correct. You know, sometimes your standard of English will be better than some that you find on the internet. That's just a thing. It's a thing with me with when I read some German, sometimes I'm thinking, oh, there's a lot of mistakes in that. Um, it doesn't mean that I don't make mistakes, but it means that I'm, I'm recognising somebody's made some. So um, generally, books that have been published have less mistakes in them because they've been edited. But just be aware that there may be some mistakes in the things that you're reading. And just because somebody is a native speaker, it doesn't mean that they won't make mistakes. Uh, number eight, don't just read what your friends are reading. I spoke about looking for recommendations from your friends, but if you don't like the kind of things that your friends are reading, or the people in your book club are reading, or um, the books that you've been recommended, or even what your English teacher says you should read in your spare time, if you know you're not going to enjoy it, then maybe find something else, because just because something is popular, you know, you can hear everybody talking about a book because it's popular, or a, a TV series, or a film, or whatever, just because it's popular, it doesn't mean you'll like it. So yeah, sure, give it a go. But if you don't enjoy it, then there's plenty of other books out there. Uh, number nine, something that people are often told to do is to start with children's books when they're 
reading their first English books, but you know that can be a bit a bit boring for adults who don't usually read children's books. And in fact, some of the language in children's books is more difficult because the authors make up words to make it sound exciting, and they're not actual words. Um, I definitely say go for books that are a little bit easier if if you're concerned about your language level. Um, but it doesn't have to be a children's book. And it doesn't have to be a bilingual book either, you know the ones that you get with one side is one language and one side is the other language, and that can help, but it can also become a bit of a, a kind of hard work. You're not really just reading the book to enjoy it, you're comparing the two texts all the time, and sometimes people like doing that, but for some people it, it really doesn't help. Um, and number 10 is if you do, don't think that audiobooks are going to be harder because they're normal spoken English. Because a lot of um, players for listening to audiobooks do give you the option of slowing things down. So you can play something, you can reduce the speed, it doesn't make the person sound strange, um, it just makes things a bit slower. And if that will help you to learn, then it's okay to do that. It will take a little bit longer, but who cares? You know, as long as you're enjoying the book, that's okay. So there is an option to do that in a lot of players. Um, you can speed it up as well if you want to do that too. But if you want, need it to be a bit slower, don't don't write off audiobooks because you think it would be too fast to understand normal speech. So think about what you want to read. If reading is something that's important to you, something you want to work on in 2018, think about what that is. Um, and if you if you want to read something about improving your business English, I do have a book about that on my website. Um, so yeah, you're welcome to go and find out about that and where you can buy it. Um, also, if you're interested in audiobooks, um, unfortunately this is just for people in England and or the UK and Germany. But if you haven't had a free book from Audible, you can get one. Um, I have a link on my site where you can sign up. It is signing up, so you do have to remember to stop the subscription if you don't want it, but you can get one free book with a subscription and then cancel it before you start paying if that's what you want to do, or you can start paying if you want the subscription, but that is a way to get one free audiobook and they've got loads of books on there, so that's another thing you can do. Um, finally, I just wanted to say that I wanted to know if anybody would be interested in an online book club for learners of English. Um, it's something that I'm considering starting. I won't do it if nobody wants to join in, but um, if you would be interested in that, then let me know either by emailing um, Kirsty at englishwithkirsty.com, K I R S T Y, or you can go to the show notes page and there's a contact form on there. So englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast slash episode 122. Um, so the idea would be it's a place for English learners to get together, it would be free. Um, we would talk about tips for reading, about the books that you're enjoying, um, that kind of thing. And you know, places where you get books or um, authors that you like, that kind of thing. So rather than Business English, which is the main topic for my other Facebook group, this would be specifically for people who enjoy reading in their spare time. So that would be free, um, and if people did want one-to-one -one time with me to talk about a specific book and to to learn and to talk about vocabulary and to have my individual time, then there there would be a paid program for that because you know that's that's one-to-one -one time. But for a general group for people who love books, that that would be free. So if you're interested in that, let me know. Otherwise, have a good week and have fun learning English. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the English with Kirsty podcast. If you have any questions or comments, my email address is kirsty at englishwithkirsty.com or you can go to www.englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast where you'll find information about the individual episodes.